We're live. Well, good day, good morning, good afternoon, a very good evening to everyone. I tip my hat to you in this season of peace and light for our second annual holiday poetry open house to celebrate the end of our second season of Cultivating Voices Live Poetry. And uh, what a year it has been. Uh, I could never have anticipated that we would, of course I anticipated we would still be going, but I would not have anticipated that we would have to still be using Zoom uh, or all the other reading series that we know um, that we'd still be in the place that we are in, in terms of, of the pandemic. So all the more grateful that we're able to gather together um, to uh, celebrate each other, have some good cheer, and of course, some great, great poetry. Uh, we've got a very, very festive crowd that continues to gather um, in the Zoom room here, our poetry studio. Uh, and, and hello to those of you who may be watching us from Facebook. I am so, so grateful to my special guests who are featured guests who are joining us in the first hour. And of course, we will head to the open mic for the second hour with folks whose names were literally picked out of Santa's hat for today's reading. And we'll have a couple, um, we'll have a couple gift giveaways as well. Uh, just a little, little bit because we have so many readers for today. I wanna, uh, I want to give, of course, my immense gratitude to Don Krieger, Kim Ports Parsons for being here every Sunday, supporting this endeavor um, with me. We couldn't do it without them. And of course, to all of you who join us. Our guest readers today um, will be reading for five minutes each. Uh, and then when we go to the live open mic in the second hour, we'll be hearing from more of our members sharing um, a poem uh, up to three minutes. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, just say a few words about Cultivating Voices live poetry and get to our first reader, our first guest reader for tonight, today morning for some of you. Well, as you know, in March, 2020, uh, my sister Elizabeth Ann and I decided to launch a venture called Cultivating Voices Live Poetry. We started inviting people off of my personal Facebook page. And we began those first couple weeks with about 300 members. We're now over 3000 people um, on our Facebook group and a smorgasbord of all of you join us week after week for a number of our platforms, including our new book showcases, our uh, live open mics, whether that's our wild, our wild card open mic or our featured poets focus. And of course, we also have many, many special events. I hope you've enjoyed the postings that I've been sharing with all of you. I've, I haven't even been able to get through the year's retrospective because I'm trying to name every single person who's read with us this year. But if you've been a reader or a listener, just know that today is a celebration of, of you and with my immense gratitude for coming together every Sunday uh, from my kitchen. And I'm so grateful that we get to share in the spirit of the season with one another for some poetry from a number of our members who have uh, graced us with their poetry during the year. Well, I wanna start out with Kate Wegrizen and just say, Kate, may, if we were to do the math, K 
Kate would not with without with with the exception of Don, Kim, and myself, may be the person who has attended the most readings and probably the most consecutive readings if we also like started to do those kind of baseball statistics. So I want to, it seems particularly fitting to welcome Kate and thank you for your amazing, amazing dedication. Um, and uh, so glad you are our first reader for today's special ho -po oh, holiday poetry open house reading. My honor, my honor. <clears throat> I'm wearing a sweatshirt of snow. In Colorado, this is the longest streak of non-measurable snow and we're tied with 1887. We're in a drought, yes. Cultivating voices standing tree of strength. Gathering poets from around the world, we stand beside each other. Listening, we learn similarities and differences of culture, history, heartfelt delivery of experience. Healing words weave peace. Branches of this tree send us out to Kadiwampal the verb to travel purposefully towards a yet unknown destination, voices of accents, dialects, diversity, enlighten and intrigue. Hope rhythmically fills the air. I always come back to your CV, Sandy Yanone, to this be blessed for all of us. Okay, I'm diving in the pool. All people live on the other side of the world. All people live on the other side of a country, on the other side of an ocean, on the other side of a river bridge, on the other side of the tracks. They are from the other side, rang out the warning. We all live on the other side. Traders will no longer divide. Side by side, 25 of the world's largest lakes are the size of the Caspian Sea. Delphos, the dolphins, are the womb of the sea. Protect as is above, is below. Rise, bald eagle, solo or paired, gallant wingspan across the land of thousands of years, first people nations. The vultures outsourced a rookery committee, fill a tree, a new colony, forts, are fortified, reinforce cruel captors pride. First people deemed dispensable, newcomers chased indigenous from their hunting and fishing grounds and waters of survival. Those broken treaties, treaties defined their pride as genocide. Mend where you live. Modern days continue dissemination with greed. Once for gold, now pipelines, petrol, the world weeps. Once for gold, now for petrol, split tongue patriarch closes federal governments to close down and starve the first people, closing the Bureau of Indian Affairs change this cycle. Reparations join a gathering of nations, bring truth to the power of education, the schools, books. We create a new language 
we savor the ancient. Dream an orchestra of poets, dawn spotlights nature's renewal, devote in the place you live. Over development, cement trucks come in and pour for a new house. And then the rigs dump the remnants of the cement on the soil of the next house to be built. Planted trees, roots are caged by cement dumped spoils. Attention to the place we live. All of my love. Happy holidays. Now I cry. Woo! <laughs> we can always count on a good cry from you, Kate Wegerson. Thank you for starting us off for our holiday poetry open house. I'm going to try to keep my comments to a minimum because we need to get through um, through the you know through the through the so many readers we have for today. I am so excited and humbled and 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 full of the, the warm feelings in my my uh, velveteen shirt, my velvet, my red velveteen, the warmth of my velveteen shirt here to welcome uh, Fergus Hogan, who's just a, just uh, as you all know, we we've, we've been enjoying Fergus's poetry from the very early weeks of Cultivating Voices, live poetry, and so many memorable readings. I'll just mention for this year, a reminder of the contributions on World Poetry Day in March, we saw the retrospective. Thank you, Fergus, my dear brother, for being with us tonight. Samantha. Uh, Sandy. Happy Christmas, everyone. Um, and I'd love to spend the next five minutes just saying happy Christmas to all my old and new friends in Cultivating Voice. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Kim, Don, and Elizabeth for bringing this family together and holding us safe for so long. Um, so we've got a full moon here in Ireland again. We've done this before under a full moon. We've a full moon. We've a winter solstice. Uh, we're moving from the dark back into the light uh, together, friends. Um, and it's also coming into Christmas. So for those reasons, I might read a summertime poem to begin with um, called Meadow Sweet. Mm. And for the good hippies in the room, they'll know that Meadow Sweet is the Irish herb. It's like a spell song for fertility and love and whatever might fail you. Meadow Sweet. Queen of the meadow, by rivers and streams, you make this world more sensuous just by your being. Now when I dream, I dream of you. I see you standing on the other side of the lake, waving from a meadow of wildflowers, as if it were yesterday. And we were still so young, cloud watching with bees and butterflies. As if there was nothing for us to worry about. As if all we would always do would always be all right, as if, as if, as if. And yet, you fill me with your hope, catching the sunlight in your hair, drawing it down into the day, painting your magic on this earth with your tender brush strokes. In creamy whites and dusty golden yellow sunbursts, your perfume hangs upon the air. Light as a summer breeze, you take my breath away and hear at this evening's edge, I sit by the shoreline and pray. I ask the goddess of this land if I may sweeten morning tea for you with scented flowers. Gently braid capsules and stamens through your hair. Before you sleep, place this posy of meadowsweet underneath your pillow and all of my dreams in your hands for your keeping. Um, Thank you. I might read, I might read uh, Winter Solstice from my chapbook, Bitter and Cry, for the nights that's in it. Winter Solstice. All winter long, I search for crystals vibrating, bright as a poem of self-forgiveness. 
As the sun goes down, I dig through roots of trees, fallen in the silence of solitude, after too many nights left alone, leaning towards the pull of the moon. I gather wind fallen firewood and a yule log. Remember elders gone before me, stone struck against stone. I lift the sparks and cupped hands like prayers. I breathe flames into bits of silver birch bark, dry moss and twigs. This night, I keep the fire company till the first light of new dawn. And friends, if I could finish with a poem that was printed, that was published this week in the Waterford Christmas um, uh, Annual. So we have a beautiful local annual that comes out each Christmas. So this is my Christmas poem this year. And I'd like to read it tonight for all of us, Sandy, Kim, Don, Elizabeth, but all of us, together now. You remind me every day, look up, Look out for my self-centeredness, out of my window and into the world we share with all sorts of beings and soulful things. How we are all so connected, so dependent upon each other's careful attention and love. You remind me the past is the past and the future I dream of or fear might never arrive. You laugh and call me back to here and now. You teach me every time how to be present. Look up, look out again, watch and see how we bear witness to these fleeting moments. Breathe, life, love, it's enough. Happy Christmas, friends. Fergus Hogan, the folks of Waterford fortunate to have the connection with your poetry and of course for us to be able to connect with that very same poem that they received like on their doorsteps uh you know uh in their papers what what a gift thank you I send you all the blessings of the season very grateful well, we go to the early morning uh, in New Zealand to uh, welcome uh, with so much gratitude uh, to be able to hear some poetry from our dear Rachel Gomez. And uh, you heard Rachel a number of times this year, and it's always, always uh, a great, a great a great joy to be able to be in your company. Thank you. Kia ora, Sandy. Thank you so much for having me. Um, Merry Christmas, one and all. Um, Sandy, Kim Hawk Parsons, Elizabeth Ann, John Greger, all you beautiful, beautiful poets. It's just wonderful to be here. I'm going to start with a, a quote that I keep next to my desk. Tom Stoppard, I shall have poetry in my life and adventure and love, 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 love above all. I'm going to read a poem that I actually wrote um, this weekend past um, for my husband. It was his, his birthday and um, it goes on the theme of uh, what we all want and desire to love ourselves and love one another. And poetry just makes it all better. So it's called You Make Me Feel. A concrete path is blasted from close range. The slippery lament of several seasons vanishing with each clean sweep. Tiny insects straining against displacement, casualties of a Sunday tsunami on a quiet suburban street. As you toil, your velvety brows furrow, an occasional inevitable meeting, like neighbors briefly conversing 
over a fence in contemplation of a maddening world. That beloved cat with her honky tonk stride drops and rolls to worship the sun empress, a belly full of offerings, her amber polished eyes blink contentment like an overzealous traffic light. Inside, I read the newspaper, sifting the world headlines. Children in the Congo mine cobalt for a dollar a day. Man dies killed by the lion he loved to hunt. Lockdown rules broken by the Dutch royal family, hundreds killed by super typhoon. Elon Musk talks life on Mars. Mightn't Mars turn us away in protest of what we did to planet Earth, I wondered. Just then, you saunter in, a garden flower extending from those safe hands. On the doorstep, another year shuffles its feet, all barefoot and callous. How has time come to zoom by? Our bones are softening and it's hard to keep a heart from hardening. Yet, despite it all, perhaps because of it all, you knowingly reach out, place an arm with a needle upon a black eclipse of vinyl, peel us a sunset from a simple grin and spin me around with the conviction of Aretha Franklin looking for Jesus on a Saturday. Thank you. Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you, Rachel. Again, I remember the very first time you reached out to me over uh, the direct messages to see if we could connect and, and get you on the program in the very early weeks. And it's been quite a journey and I'm so, so grateful to be able to celebrate this second year with you. And of course, all our friends here joining us live in Zoom and um, on Facebook. Uh, I'm trying to send out little hellos to each one of you. It's uh, really humbling uh, to, to see all your faces and names here and to think about all the poems that you've shared. Well, another poet who's been with us from the, again, the early, early beginnings. And uh, I was able to post Mari Maxwell's reading when we were reading going live to Facebook individually. Uh, there's not many of you, Fergus can say that, and can say, there's a number of you here that can say that you, that you went through that process and Mari was one of them. And I'm so, so uh, thrilled to have you, our dear, dear Mari, join us tonight to uh, share some poems. Thank you. I think I'm going to be the one to cry too now, Kate. <laughs> That's so beautiful, Sandy. Thank you. And thanks for having me. And thanks for all you've done to bring so much joy to, into all our lives during these really wild times. And the same too to you, Kim Ports Parsons and Don and Elizabeth Ann. You have brought much solace to this person here. Thank you. Autumnal shift. Amethyst harebells sweep translucent trumpets, hold tight to the earth, ringing, singing in October scowls. Spread coy skirts along swaying tides where we all drift. One main winter. Take 114 North to Sebago just after a first snowfall where virginal paths and windows eavesdrop on the hushed turn of the wheels. Uphill, all is a winter canopy, ghost-like spindles unspool on fresh fallen clouds. Arctic lace in early afternoon light, a rainbow kaleidoscope. And if it's clear, 
still light. You may spy the white mountain trail where once the old man of the mountain called home near a place we once called home. Rem. She dreams in limestone coils, fetal curls in egg box pitting, slides through haystone, silica and fossil to roam along the lake bed. Seal-like, she propels through bamboo, catches a golden slice of wild iris, head splayed in the sun, welcoming every filling thrust of sunlight to stamen where nothing binds. Before her, the lakeshore summons her down, deeper to where the yawning abyss awaits to cast its spell, and how yes, yes, how she is gladly lost. Thank you. Mari, if I didn't know better, I would say you were sitting right here in my kitchen with you. The, you are clear, clear as a bell, your poetry, oh, a, a beacon for all of us this evening, morning, afternoon, wherever we're listening from. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Again, next, um, what can I say about Martina McGowan? You've heard the poems from since since Martina joined us uh, a number of times this year and last year as Martina was releasing um, her much acclaimed collection, I Am the Rage. Uh, it has been a, such a, an honor for me to get to know this poet uh, and to be able for all of us to get to know um, her and her work and her dedication. She shows up almost as much as UK. <laughs> and uh, I am uh, always the better for being in the room with Martina McGowan. Thank you. And also folks, featured, my, my dear, dear featured guests, please, please put in the chat um, where folks can pick up your collections. Uh, you know, there's still time for, still a little, little bit of time to pick up those last minute holiday gifts. You wanna support our presses and journals and such. So welcome, Martina. Thanks, Sandy. Um, and thank you, Don and Kim and Elizabeth Ann for all that you do. Um, I can't add much to what Mari has already said, so I'll spend my time reading the poems instead. With our hearts eaten out by the pain and suffering of all from harassment, crudeness, brutality, joy is still spoken here. Joining the glorious cicada song that we shall all be free and unmolested one day, backs still bending beneath the grinding wheel of time, joy is still spoken here. Judging we've cried our last tears, thinking we've keened our last goodbye, we still find joy. Contentment in the warmth of love, gratification in the temporary calm, respite in communion, exaltation in dance, wonderment at new life, merriment in simple pleasures, ecstasy in nature, rejoicing in faith, triumph in still being alive. In defiance of all else, joy is still spoken here in this heart, in this life. Light lives within hope, burns bright, and for generations to come, joy will still be spoken here. This next obviously is not my own, but I think it speaks to the bond that uh, many of us have made through CB by one of my all time favorite poets. And the youth said, speak to us of friendship. And he answered saying, your friend is your needs answered. He is your field, which you sow with love and reap with thanksgiving. And he is your board and your fireside, where you come to him with your hunger and you seek peace for him. When your friend speaks his mind, you fear not the nay in your own mind, nor do you withhold the eye. And when he is silent, your heart ceases not to listen to his heart. For without words in friendship, all thoughts, all desires, all expectations are born and shared with joy that is unacclaimed. 
When you part from your friend, you grieve not, for that which you love most in him may be clearer in his absence, as the mountain to the climber is clearer from the plain. And let there be no purpose in friendship, save the deepening of the spirit. For love that seeks aught but the disclosure of its own mystery is not love, but a net cast forth, and only the unprofitable is caught. And let your best be for your friend. If he must know the ebb of your tide, let him know its flood also. For what is your friend that you should seek him with hours to kill, seek him always with hours to live? For it is his to fill your need, but not your emptiness. In the sweetness of friendship, let there be laughter and sharing of pleasures. For in the dew of little things, the heart finds its morning and is refreshed. Thank you. If we had time, I'd say all of us unmute and, and repeat, joy is still spoken here um, amidst everything that we share. Joy is, all, is always still spoken here. Grateful for today to be reminded of the prismatic, the, the prismatic way um, we live, thrive, attempt to survive in the challenging times with always that reminder that joy is always something necessary to be spoken. Thank you. Thank you so much, Martina. I will move us to the North in Canada and Calgary and to another dear friend to Cultivating Voices uh, another person who you can go and see the very first time when Josephine read, it's a sideways view. Because uh, 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 you couldn't figure out how to tilt the camera. But that, that was the first of many, 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 many gifts that you brought to us at Cultivating Voices. Happy holidays. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. And I owe you all a huge debt of gratitude for creating the space for poetry and community. Uh, it's lovely to be here. And it's such an honor to be asked to share my poems. Um, I'm, I'm going to read new poems. And I'm going to start with an ode to September. We're on the cusp of the winter solstice. And the prompt was to personify September. I'm reading um, from my computer screen. September, September. Would you help us remember when your soft mossy hair turns to gray? How the songbird awoke us, the warm breeze bespoke us, and we played in the garden all day. September, September, when the flames turn to ember and the wind blows chilly and gray, will we think of the lilies, the peonies so frilly, bumbles and dragons astray? September, September, you've lost all your splendor, your leaves now with strewn and display. We'll pull on our jackets, our felt hats and long boots and dream this long winter away. My second piece is called Winter Reverie. The sky heavy round our shoulders today, a cloak of unfallen snow and now, warm in my home, I watch as flecks fill the globe. Tomorrow, the tracks of deer will have been filled, the crisscross of coyote, the spindly signs of crow. Tonight, under down, we can dream that first dream, that nameless scent, that unbroken hush of first winter. The next piece is called Wolf and the Willow. Mistress and cubs, sedges and disparity, when will we understand it is not an either or world? Nothing exists in isolation. Man cannot manage nature. Nature, nurture, mother, earth, creator. The intricate dance of cattle and deer, the sedge and the willow, the wolf. The next piece is called Hoarfrost. And Hoarfrost, uh, we wake up to Hoarfrost here um, when there's uh, moisture in the in the air and it freezes onto branches and twigs and stems. Dazzle refraction, winter light scintillation, this network of branches. 
Unseen artists transmutes leafless landscape to platinum, crystal, lace, captivating six-sided symmetries. Bundled bodies pause, mouths wide in wonder, then on they forge, condensing breath, dissipating morning frost. And then a haiku. We walk in darkness, listening for the winter song of stars. And two more short pieces. This one is called Nighttime Deer. Snow reveals the path of deer across my moonlit lawn, winter's whispered secret. Winter's secret whispered beneath the moon across my snowy lawn, the dreamy path of deer. And my final piece, I've been working on this one for a long time and I think I've got it finished, I'm not quite sure. Um, you are a winter garden buried in cold ground, dreaming of new life beneath a crust of snow. Deer pauses to chew on dogwood. Magpie feasts on mountain ash. Hair halts beneath overhung branches, safe within the saucer of this place. I sit in kitchen window, bathed in double glaze, cup of tea in hand, because I know you will emerge when snow melts to living water, shoot and stem and virgin, unfurling calyx, orienting corolla velvet soft towards the radiance of the new sun. Thank you so much. Mm. Much gratitude, much gratitude for the many, many ways that you have shown up to cultivating voices live poetry over the year you were part of an, a number of readings and uh, again folks you can go and pull them all up on your own uh, and listen to them over and over again thank you so much josephine well again we um earlier this year uh matt mooney brought out uh his latest collection, Steering by the Stars. We were able to have Matt as part of the new book showcase, but Matt's been with us many times in the live open mic. And I also, of course, remember um, your sharing, as I do those of you who shared last year during our holiday poetry open mic. And Matt is one of those poets that also was uh, going live to Facebook with us um, now many, many, many months ago. Welcome, Matt Mooney. Sandy, thank you very much. Now I have a, a cocktail. I've been mixing a cocktail of very short poems. So, and uh, I will just, as an introduction, just mention the source of the poem. The source of the first poem uh, well, uh, was a young lady, a niece of mine in Melbourne who was homesick. And uh, in her words, and I think maybe Facebook, I picked up this homesickness and I wrote a poem for her. It's called Hot Port. Hot Port. Snowbound in Bantry, st stranded up in Sheskin, thrown together tightly by an overstained frost in its grip days on end. Streaming out well clad, we create snow angels and our own snowman. Coming in red cheeked, gathering up to the fire, sharing out the hot port. And the second poem is uh, the source of the second poem is a homeless person. Of course, this person is nameless to me, unfortunately. Uh, uh, here we go. Homeless. A sleeping bag, he's home, thrown around him, seated on a city bridge. His only company there, footsteps of indifference, making him invisible, chilling him as they pass, and the river down below, on its way 
to Dublin Bay. Used to staying silent, catching now and then snatches of what is said in the evening rush, left out of all that is despair, gone to the bone. No hope of good times. His hand holding out the heart to fill paper cup. And I drop in a coin to hear the echo of it. Sounding a happier note in the hollow of his heart. And the third short poem is called The Fiddler. And his name was Ned Casey. From Brosna County, Kerry. The Fiddler. Ned set out from Brosna and Breda drove their car. Coming by Parsons Cross tonight in John B's bar. He'd settle in the middle, the night music to begin. He'd be tuning the fiddle, more Kjoltori joining in. He played sweet and low, all in musical confessions, lovely polkas they'd know in sleeve bluegrass sessions. A farmer and a showman who'd sing brass in the tone. He was a jolly plowman who shared his joy around. The pride of Aaron player, one time across the pond, and a gentleman by nature who loved his native land. He sang the song we loved at a Nihikshol at home, then afterwards sadly died. Frida told me on the phone. And the source of the next poem, that, that they were, those poems were from the Singing Woods, 2017, and the, the last two poems are from Earth to Earth, 2015. And the, the first poem of the two that I will read tonight concerns my own wife. So, and it's called The Dancing Years. This is for Mary. Would you say yes and thank you if I were to cross the floor tonight and ask you out to dance, dear? Well, yes, I would. I would indeed. If I were asked, I'd dance with you. Love comes with the asking only. Take to the floor tonight with me. It's better for us than being lonely. By the fire, the two of us so quiet, who swore to share our lives as one. Let us fill the space between us here by remembering our dancing years. And the final poem is about my finest of a grandson called Liam O'Kelly. And it was when he was even younger still, and he was their family were living in Brussels. And the poem is called Half Light. Soft orange glow of lamplights outside in the quiet city street. Inside, a tired child lies sleeping after his long walk in the wood. He's tired too of all this waiting for Santa Claus to come to him sometime later before the dawn. Angel lights and bells are strung along the low white lacy curtain. Someone passing by the window, hurrying home on Christmas Eve. Here inside the half light is serene. The trees outside are standing by in this sacred vigil here in Brussels for the morn that Christ was born. Thank you very much.
It wouldn't be a holiday poetry open house without Matt Mooney. Thanks for being with us, Matt. Thank you, Cindy. And my best to you and your family for this holiday season. And you likewise. Indeed. Well, we move next to Kim Ports Parsons. I'm I'm sure uh <laughs> I personally I would not want to follow Matt on the holiday on the holiday open house mic, but you're up for that, you're up for it, Kim. And of course, everybody you know, Kim's my dear friend from graduate school and we could not, there's no way we'd be sitting here today if it wasn't for all the work that Kim has put in during this year. And she stepped up to the plate last year when we were planning for our um, Laureate Love Fest in February and helped organize that and stayed on after uh, to continue to su support this endeavor, endeavor. I'm so grateful. I send all the love to you and let's hear some poems. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> I, I hope I stay stable and can stay on screen because I just want to smile at you guys. I just love you all so much. I'm so happy to be with you today. Best, happy everything, whatever it is you like to celebrate. I'm going to begin a little mystically. May the particles of my body travel the endless conduits. My father came to me in a dream a week after he died, knocked on the front door and grinned in the summer night air. He glowed from some unseen amber neon. Everything is fine, he said. I wanted you to know. Then a beam of light, bright and cool, just took him, carried him down the road like high beams sliding a bedroom wall, a shadow's opposite. Home in dreams is that house on the hill. Trouble is the Sunday school. Tonight, the moon taps me on the shoulder, floating in an unmoored boat, my mind rocked awake. I used to argue with the teacher. His name was Vernon, which means Alder Grove. He insisted God was an old bearded white man on a cloud, I swear to you. And we were made in his image. He's buried just feet from our family stones. When I die, lay me in the loam under the big oak on the path through the woods. Deep down in the endless flow of talk there among the trees there, from the centurion to the saplings. Sometimes, I sense it passing under my feet there, like a bird overhead on a bright day, but in reverse. May the particles of my body travel the endless conduits. I wish I had the right words to part the sea of all the nonsense and save us all from drowning. Quiet those commandments. Press my ear to earth and listen hard. A network of souls whisper and the dark matter stretches. An infinite stream, we swim and swim. That's one image from which we're made, Vernon. The alder groves another. Try to remember what cannot nor ever will be named. All that we are is this river of light.
And I'm going to read a second poem, which in the season of giving and sharing joy is a poem I wrote as a gift to my husband, Doug. I want to ride through this life for Doug. And it's just about how sometimes joy comes suddenly and sweeps us up. And it's momentary, but it's grand. I want to ride through this life. I want to ride through this life like a child standing on the hump of an old sedan, leaning over the front bench seat, not knowing what's beyond, but full of eager anticipation, gleaming windshield of possibility, sun breaking through greening trees. You drive, beloved. I know you'll go gently, assuring it's not too far or too long or too hard, that wonderful things are waiting. Along the way, songs we know and sing along and new songs and special things to eat and drink and games with words and laughter and space for silence too, for sleeping and even dreams, you'll go just fast enough that if I jump, I'm sorry, you'll go just fast enough on a country lane, mountains in the blue distance, that if I jump as we climb a cresting hill, and if I catch the moment just right, my jump will become weightlessness, a suspension, a floating in joy, a kind of flying, a hawk testing its wings on its first miraculous glide. Peace, love, and poetry, you beautiful people. Thank you for letting me be part of it today, Sandy. Peace, love, and poetry right back to you. Uh, don't try not to choke up. Okay, everyone. Um, Kim and I always sign off when we're writing to each other with peace, love, and poetry. So it's very meaningful to be able to just share those words. Those three simple words, huh? But they, they hold a lot of they, they hold so much. It's such a big container, peace, love, and poetry. Well, uh, my friends, the, the state of New Mexico has been so, so kind to Cultivating Voices live poetry. There's so many of you. I know Josephine is snapping. There's, there's so many of you in the room, so many of our dear friends from New Mexico here today with us. And, and we're going to get to hear from uh, a, a person who lifts our spirits all the time on Cultivating Voices live poetry. And that is just the, the, the beautiful voice and being of Teresa Galleon. Thank you for joining us from on the road. I know you're not in New Mexico. <laughs> that is so true. I am feeling truly blessed that I was included today. So I definitely had to find a place where I could speak to you all from somewhere in the desert. Even though my home base is New Mexico, I'm not at home right now. I'm in, on the open road doing my thing of uh, expressing my reflections and gratitude for being. And so I wanna read three short poems for you that I feel reflect that because that is a part of me. But I also want to say a special thank you and shout out of peace, joy, and love to the whole CVL community. What a blessing to be a part of this community and to be able to hear so many of you, not just across the United States, but across the pond. What a blessing. The first poem is called Mountain Meadow. I walk with Rumi 
in a mountain meadow, whisper close to his ear, what is the lesson today? Let's go touch every flower singing in the meadow. I suppress the why on the tip of my tongue. The teacher walks ahead of me, gives each flower a gentle caress. I follow behind, touch flowers along the path. Caught in the static grandeur of color bending toward sunlight, I lose focus on the teacher sitting next to a bouquet of aster. As I trip over a rock, the teacher breaks my fall, puts his finger to his lips. The lesson today is about love. The next piece is called Ring, Fire Ring. I draw a circle around the fire ring with my fateful hiking pole and bow my head low before the sacred purple moon. Gratitude rushes through my veins. The swell of peace surrounds my heart. I am blessed with a spiritual moon. Forgiveness washes my bones clean. I glow before the night fire. My soul is awakened to listen. Distant memories linger as water ripples massage my ears with songs of peace, joy, and love. Solitude enfolds me like a warm blanket sitting by the creek of reflection. My tears sing back the joy I feel from the water singing my name. And the last short piece is called we must walk. This is dedicated to all of you out there listening. We drink daily from the cup of life, the bitter and caress our lips. Sometimes it is hard to swallow the contents because the burn is so great. We are passionately drawn to the flavors in that cup that teach hard lessons. An escape plan is not possible. Each challenge must be conquered to earn a wisdom note. We carry scars like notches on a gun belt to show the years of achievements. Hard tests continue to visit and do not soften until we learn to walk gently into the light. Thank you so much. Blessings. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, safe travels. Thank safe you. Travels. And uh, again, Teresa joined us for a new book showcase this year. Her latest book, The Scent of Love, of course, so appropriate uh for this for this for this time and every time every moment thank you i love i always love hearing you work and always so happy when we're able to be in each other's company well again one of the gifts of this year was that i got to meet our next poet in person for the very first time and right, yeah, um, you know, I, I met Don Krieger through, I think, Susanna Case, uh, and Don helped support me do a reading through um, an uh, endeavor he was starting called the Hopscotch Readings. And as a result of that, we stayed in contact. And as you know, everyone, the rest is sort of CV history. Um, Don joined to support this endeavor. He's here every week. He is also just a poet that I admire so much. And I'm looking forward to Don's new book coming out and you all being able to hear it in our third season coming up. Would you please, please welcome 
my dear friend that I got to meet this summer in Old Saybrook, Connecticut, uh, and had a beautiful lunch with uh, Don Krieger. Mm. Again, I'm getting a little choked up. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Sandy. And thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, it's it's a uh, it's an honor to get a chance to read in this co company. I send poems out to be reviewed by literary journals to, just to get pe the people that I know are there to read them. So it's really nice that you're here, um, and it's wonderful for me that I get to do something that's so easy and and that's good for a lot of people. That helps a lot of people, like Mari said. I mean. A lot of us depend on it, and I do too. I have two poems for you. They're, they're new ones. I don't think you've heard them. Um, for no reason. Oh, this is a composite. It's written in two voices, and when it switches voices, I'll snap my fingers, because you can't see it on the page. For no reason. The right carotid, a vascular case with stroke risk, so I am here, for no reason. Her heart stops, her brain too. I know you from your world, from your, I know you from your world and scripture. You drowned everything when you repented, the brutal world you had made you murdered Lot's wife for remembering her city as you burned it down. What's her crit when it comes back low? Where's the hemorrhage? He cracks her sternum, closed heart massage, minute after minute, no rhythm or hope. You glorified Moses who lay in wait to murder. You hardened Pharaoh's heart to alibi your slaughter. Egypt's firstborn to the last, calf, kid, lamb, and child. When I take over, the bone edges grind under my hands, her pliant heart beneath, soft and silent but then living, pulsing, pushing back. Time after time, you boasted, I do this so you know how mighty I am. Half her brain returned. They gave blood, placed a pacer and an assist pump, got her off the table alive, but no further. How can I find you, righteous and trustworthy, love you or even fear and obey you? It's a hundred generations since you've spoken. Since then, that surgeon turned to cosmetics, varicose veins. I work with numbers. They don't push back or need reasons. Reap the Whirlwind, 2020, deadliest year for gun violence in America, 43,500, American Journal of Managed Care. Billboards then, segregation now, segregation forever, visualize world peace. These days with the COVID, we keep the windows shut, hold our water, drive like the hunted, like the dispossessed. True Christians obey Christ. Women who serve gain paradise. At the rest stop, every other face exposed, guns at the ready, 
the others with face masks like targets. That's reap the whirlwind. Thank you, Don. Thank you is not enough for to say to you. And we all share in our gratitude for not only how you support this platform week after week, but also for your poetry. And again, as I said, folks, looking forward to having you all here from Don's new book in the upcoming new year. Well, as I mentioned, folks, the, 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 the state of New Mexico has been very, very kind to us. And uh, we got to meet in our Laureate Love Fest, a uh, poet who uh, continued to offer poetry at so, so many of our special events. Um, you've been seeing the postings. Um, it, uh, I'll mention just a couple uh, our laureate love fest, but I want to, I want to really, uh, I really want to laud the reading that Mary Oishi and Tanya Ko Hong and Janice Mir Katani did on March 16th, our converse, our, 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 our witness, a conversation with three generations of Asian American poets. And, uh, uh, Mary is, an, ast an astounding gift to the group. And I, and, and I know you would not have felt the day complete without being able to hear some poems from Mary Awishi. Thank you, Mary, for being with us here today and throughout the whole year since we first met you at the Laureate Love Fest. Thank you, Sandy. It's my great honor, really, to be among this company of poets and very hard to follow Don, I must say. Uh, every time I read or I even listen to others read at Cultivating Voices, it reminds me of this definition that I was required to write by the Albuquerque Poet Laureate Committee. It's a definition of poetry. And I'll just read the first two sentences. Poetry is our human bond deeper than blood. Like the underground root of an aspen grove, it connects us where we all belong to each other. I feel that every time I am here with the cultivate, Cultivating Voices group. So thank you. I wrote this poem quite a bit before the pandemic, but it has additional meaning now. It's called, You Are Here. Yes, others get unearned advantages. You are advantage too. Ancestor to ancestor, goblet to goblet, poured strength to strength through generations, centuries tested, multiplied, strength to strength to strength, poured into you. That's how you squeezed into this life equipped. Yes, others get unearned accolades, but what reward is higher than that you are here when so many times you should have died? In that dark room alone, in that dark room with someone who should have never been in charge, you are here hearing these words, so listen well. What gold trophied glory can match the fact that you are here? Less equipped, you would have died when that crazy man grabbed you in the street, when waters rose, when fevers raged, when you got that shocking news, when you were completely betrayed, when your heart was utterly broken. Not even priest or wizard could take such blood red sorrow, paint this day in blues and turn it royal purple. You should have died. You should have died so many times, I cannot count them all. You should have died, but here you are. Still here, still here, still dancing.
This poem I wrote especially for today, so I hope it works. It's called Because Holidays. Because the sun sinks too early in winter, because the light disappears from your eyes, because this year it's brown and bare branches, because snow glare is so worth the shielding, because spring melts to rivers to quench us, because there are seasons we won't ever see, because we grow fixed, we go frozen, because we need this day, because there is no forever, because change, because change, because light comes around, because light follows darkness, because holidays, because holy days, because hope, because hope. Thank you. Oh, Whew. because hope, because hope, oh my gosh. I am very grateful always for a poem written for the occasion. They're not easy to do and you, you brought it, Mary. You brought it as you always do. Thank you, thank you. So appreciative, oh my gosh. Remember today, because hope, because hope. Well, the last, I guess the last featured reader is me. <laughs> Before we switch over to the open mic, I, I don't, I, Kim put me on the list. Now I have, to, I have to do it. I have to do it, Kim. Okay. I'll read a couple poems for you all. And um, thank you. Kay Fergus, I'm getting choked up. Rachel, <laughs> Mari, Martina, Josephine, Matt, Kim, and Teresa, Don, and Mary. Oh my gosh, what a what a first what a first round for our poetry open house here, our holiday poetry open house. Uh, I, I knew it was going to be good today, and it succeeded everything that I could have imagined, of course. So let me go and read a couple poems to share with you. Uh, the first I want to read because I, uh, I'm going to read just two poems. The first I'd like to read is a poem that I was so fortunate to have published in Poetry Ireland Review two Decembers ago. Uh, it was Ivan Boland's final issue as editor. And of course, as you know from, as you all know, um, just four months later, she passed and uh, we continued to pay tribute to her. But this poem initially was written uh, in honor of a poet that I had studied with and marveled at. Um, Lucy Brock Broido, and uh, it's called Gratitude Workshop, and I thought it appropriate because I feel like every time we get together, every Sunday, I feel like I'm in a gratitude workshop with all of you. So here it is, Gratitude Workshop. Notebook number 12, 1991 for Lucy Brock Broido. She said, Poetry is about demons and to trust the interior of ice. I ruminate over all the advice we must endure in this world, a precarious stack of dishes at the edge of the sink or a game of midnight freeze tag in a field of no moon. She said, don't apologize, don't explain. If 14 fish swim past, what does the 15th look like? The darkest hour of the recurring bruise. She said, court tension and risk. They don't exchange names. They don't even shake greasy hands. About doubt, it's terminal, more than a blessing. Forgiveness, 
is another night of testimony. How is it you remain unmarried? I told myself it was the mattress. I had a bed. I did not lie. I find fire delectable and can sleep. She said, be careful not to be too good. And so I pretend to fidget with some anger in simplicity, the simple, let the day bear out its breakdown of horoscopes like coins that disappear into the glass face of a parking meter. All description must be revelation. I can forgive only the first gray hair. And in response to my longing, I burn the toast. Well, the second poem I would also like to dedicate to all of you. Um, again, we've, we've moved through the unimaginable by creating the imaginable through our poetry. And this is a poem that uh, encourages each of us to keep moving forward, moving forward. So this is my offering to you at the end of this year uh, to thank you for this entire year and may we move forward together uh, into a new year with hope and resilience. And remember, if you care to, some of these words, if you're in a moment where you might need some support and know that I'm behind you. This is called the next open space. We think it's about our footing, planting the fleshy parts solid to ground, taking it one step at a time, whatever it is. I try to remember this as I comfort my sisters and brothers as they migrate to spaces that feel closed before reached. I have been there outside in that dark that redefines dark without words, raising my feet or voice impossible. And yes, it is this dance that offers to turn us toward the next open space teaching us there is so much more than what we perceive breathing under our feet, the ground rising, rising all around us like immaculate glass cities. Look up, look up, always look up. And remember this about the next open space. There is always more than one. There is always more than one. My utmost gratitude to each and every one of you. Thank you. That, that completes our first round of our featured guests. Thank you. And we're going to do our drawing. Yeah. Can we do a drawing? Yeah, how, we, how about we do a drawing? How about we unmute first and give a round of applause to our... <coughs> Yay! Great. Yay! Great. 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 All right, Kim, go ahead. Enjoy the joy. So, All right, this Kim, go ahead. is Santa's hat filled with the names of all the folks who are listening during this first hour from Zoom. And we are going to give you a gift. Charlene Neely.
We have a beautiful book to give you, uh, Charlene. And after this is over, we'll be in touch for your mailing address. We have a very beautiful picture book version of Robert Frost stopping by woods on a snowy evening for you to enjoy and share with your loved ones. Um, so we'll get that to you real soon. Congratulations, Charlene. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. All right, we go to our second hour with the folks that also whose names were pulled out of that very hat that you just pulled names out of to get our list for our live open mic. And first, first sharing with us today, and a reminder, it's one poem, folks, um, up to three minutes, please, so we can get everyone in and, and keep our celebration going. Our first wonderful reader I met uh, first at, uh, I met first at Headmistress Press's The Collectibles Reading Series. And I'm so glad that after that, um, Yeva Johnson became a member of Cultivating Voices Live Poetry. And it's happy holidays to you. And it's so great to have you join us tonight or today, this afternoon. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Sandy. I am very honored to be here and to be reading with all of you today. Thank you so much. Um, as those of you who know me, I, I will do, I have one poem, it's not that long, and I do a little music before and after, that's how I do poetry. Solstice celebration, or 18 things I hear when people say happy holidays in December, after Dana Smith's alternate names for black boys. One, each day shortens so that darkness triumphs. Two, black is beautiful. Three, I succumb to desires to sleep and nest in my bed. Four, some years Hanukkah comes early and the menorah has already been put away. Five, the only resolution I keep sometimes is not to make one. Six, we burrow to stay warm in the dark. Seven, global renewal, reset a year over 24 hours. Eight, anticipate the day that earth turns on a point. Nine, endings and beginnings. 10, non-Christians hold down the workplace for a week. 11, people share smiles in the dark. 12, one more year without a father or mother. 13, celebrate both the dark and the light, the change from more of one to another. 14, black, Gratitude. 15. Count revolutions of moon and earth. 16. Miracles of the longest night. 17. Sometimes light represents false promises for change. 18. Darkness is the birth of hope. Thank you. Eva Johnson, everyone. Wow. Hmm. Darkness is the birth 
of hope. Thank you. Next, we get to hear a poem from Fatima Castle, who joined us a number of times this year, and particularly for the in your new in your new book showcase. And I'm glad to be celebrating with you today to get to hear a poem from you, Fatima. Thank you. So delighted to be here. Thank you. This is a poem I wrote earlier in the summer. It's called Hug. My mother's heart was a lake, its frozen surface cracked when I was young, with insults hurled her way, and I hurled many, wounding like rocks, till her cool glaze became a starburst of splintered love. Even her delight in daffodils withered since the bunch of yellow bells she gave me on my fifteenth birthday, whose whole heads I bit off, mad at her for some imagined slight, and in an acid spritz of blame spat her way. And my mother, murmuring to herself, sure the poor girl's tired, patted my arm, our only physical exchange, for we never hugged. Having learnt years later how an infant monkey languishes if deprived of its mother's touch, I subjected her to a lingering clinch. Not just a brief ooh-la-la -la peck on either cheek, stay two feet away from one another sort of hug, but a belly to belly, chest to chest grip, palming up and down her back, as though grooming the silk-eyed Persian, hunkered on the couch, glaring. And on a normal day, the only flesh my mother or myself would handle. And when she tried to edge away, I fastened my grip like, now I've got you, ma, you're going nowhere. The way, when small, I ached for her to hold me, limpet tight. Thank you. Beautiful poem. Thank you for joining us this eve, your evening, and all my best to you and your family. And many hugs, many hugs, many hugs, Pratiba. Been looking forward to seeing you in the new year. I am so excited that we also get to hear tonight. I say tonight when I know it's tonight for the person that's reading. From Patrick Lodge, welcome. So great to have Hi, you. Hey. Hi everyone from deepest uh, rural Yorkshire. It's great to be here though I'm not sure where here is given that we're so international. A world of poets, eh? Well, thanks to everyone involved in this marvelous gathering. I'm gonna read a short poem. It's called Kestrel on Fanny Lane. I found actually in lockdown and, 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 and the like that I developed much more of an interest in the small scale, uh, the land around me. So this is Kestrel on Fanny Lane. A few in, um, explanations. Fanny Lane is an ancient single track path out of my village, which goes up to the higher fields in the West. I think it's on a ley line, but I don't know. And in the poem, I use the word cursus which is a Neolithic processional route across a sacred landscape. So this is Kestrel on Fanny Lane. In violent stasis, the Kestrel hangs above Fanny Lane. Here is a bird uplifted, full of its life, tail feathers fanned, 
wingtips flared, head stock still in severe concentration, a scurry beneath its talons. At each step I take, the wind hoverer shrugs slightly, side slips up the lane, keeping a wary gap, as if a time served master were giving an apprentice room to watch, to learn. Beyond the lane top, where land meets sky, two posts stand in silhouette. Bereft of wall or gate, they frame the falcon, standing stones, hold it in a void where the dying light streams across, offering an invitation to any who would desire to walk this cursus, who would leave the lane, defined, straight, to haul up the mazy trackless field and step through. Thanks, Andy. Thanks for everything. Thanks, Patrick. All my best to you during this season. And to you, Nadali Cowan. And we'll see you in the new year. God willing. Indeed, indeed, indeed. I uh, just want to remind you as we head to our next reader on the open mic list that stay to the end because we've got, we've got another gift away, gift away at the end of the reading. Um, to thank uh, those of you uh, for being here today. Well, next we go to uh, another po who was giving, um, who gave their reading uh, almost a year, new book showcase reading almost a year ago today, but also has joined us many times during 2021. And uh, we've enjoyed every moment with Marcella Raymond. Thanks, Marcella, for being here. I'm so happy to see you. And I know you've had quite a year. Thank you, Sandy. Yes, um, it's, um, it's been quite a year, yes. Um, I want to say that I'm speaking to you from the lands of the Ocheti Shakawi, um, or Seven Council Fires Nation. Um, the proper name for the tribes of Santee Dakota, Yankton Nakota, and Teton Lakota people, um, often referred to as the Sioux. Um, as Sandy said, it's been quite a year for me personally. Um, my household has faced a number of challenges <laughs> this year, um, as many of you, I'm sure, have. Um, and I have to say that CVLP has been um, a, a really a gift to me in this rough year. Um, and so um, this poem is my gift to you. Um, it's called Planting Seeds. It's been a hard year and I was so afraid to go out. This love that lifts me, that works in me and feeds me, this love is my only gift to you. It spills out of me, dust weight seeds that with some God's breath crack open, germinate until wilder than the sky, this love grows into every hidden corner of the universe. Stars stick to it, each a pinprick glimmer at first, then glowing, pulsing, until its filaments illuminate the dark like dewdrops on spider silk. I wasn't watching or I would have known how much you've needed such a gift, caught as you've been by the wing of your sorrow, fluttering against loss, battered by regret. There is still time. Open this gift and it can untangle you from your barbed past. Mend with its golden light the brokenness in you give you strength enough to let go. Hold it to your ear and hear it hum, 
touch it to your tongue, let it melt into you. Feel its weightlessness. And when you've gathered in all you need, when you feel it vine around bone and nerve, when it blooms in your shadowed heart, then please open wide and give the seeds away. Thank you. What a poem, what a reminder of, of how we need to continue to plant those seeds. Then it goes back to that continued idea of hope. Isn't that what planting seeds is all about? Is hope for the future, planting seeds. Thank you, Marcella. My best to you and your family during the season of light. Very grateful for everything you've brought to us here at CV. And now we go to Harvey Sauce. Hello, Harvey. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you perfectly. Okay. Uh, poem I have to you today, well, uh, just by way of introduction, there are times when we don't pay enough attention to the objects we surround ourselves with, uh, which may be self-contained worlds, a, a snow globe, for instance. This is called, careful with that snow globe, please. Certainly you must have been asked more than once, who lives there? By one of your children or some young relative, holding up the snow globe to the fanlight and gazing into its cyclopean eye, shaking the globe a bit, then sitting back to watch the snow settle, fine as powdered sugar on a pastry. Referring, of course, to the Red Roof Chalet enclosed in blown glass, a rarity today when everything snow globes included is mass manufactured. Your glassed in house smaller even than that little house on the prairie, chronicled by Laura Ingalls and followed by us, nine volumes and nine years on TV. Truth is, the ceiling of your little house appears too low, its rooms too narrow to accommodate anything much larger than your imagination. Thumbelina couldn't have squeezed herself through those doors. Tinkerbell's wings a tissue of wishful thinking would have snagged and fallen off. And yet, and yet when you stare at it long enough, entranced by imperfections in the glass, you can sense, if not exactly see, a protest of snowshoers glaring back at you, Inuit of the snow globe ecosystem, stamping muck-lucked feet, demanding an end to apocalyptic shaking. Could your tenants be those very schadenfreudians in blown glass bubbles, consequential thinkers are always cautioning not to throw stones? And whose face would they be throwing at if not yours, hugely peering down at them? Ginormous godlike figure stirring things up with the touch of a feather duster. Prophylactically, you instruct your Haitian cleaning woman to abjure as a hoodoo, this sphere collecting dust on your desk with its lucky lose looking out, it being your job to tend to it with a timely spritz of Windex, that these avatars of your imagining might more clearly view a world yours and ours, not so snowbound as their world is. Thank you. I now will never look at the snow globe the same way again. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on you. your behalf, I hope not. We want rep representation. You. you know, one snow globe figure, one vote, even in Texas. Thank you so much, Harvey. <laughs> and my best to you during the holidays. Same and we'll to you see you all. next year.
and come join us at uh, Artful Dodger's Poetry at, or, at our mid-January reading. Check us out on Eventbrite. Follow on our CV page, everybody, and reminders to all of you to post your readings as well. Um, uh, all the new seasons will be starting up again in January, and it's great to it's great to support other reading series, and I look forward to seeing everybody, uh, not only here, but at, at all the readings around uh, around the world that we are able to attend. All right, next, uh, Kim, I'm going to double check. I don't see that Rosaline is still with us. So, Let me say I am, Sandy. There oh, she are. is. There you are. Thank I you. Am. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm here. Very, I didn't see you in the list of the participants. And so my apologies. I'm very, very glad because I knew you were here. Welcome <laughs> and happiest of holidays to you. And oh. so glad, so glad we get to hear a poem from you. Tonight. Thank you, Sandy and Thank everybody. You. Yeah, fabulous evening. We have a stunning full moon here tonight. What a, what a lovely way to spend time together. Um, this one is called Invocation. And just by way of a short explanation, it's inspired by Amergen, who is the first recorded poet in this part of the world. So Invocation. Wind thrown words and tune, ancient song of Amergen, I am breath of trees. Tides, storms, sea stacks rise. Raven's bright black feather falls. I am empty skies. I am crag's eagle. Lake, stream, river, trough of wave. Salmon in the pool. I am leaf's silence. Melody of throat and beak beat of hoof and heart. I am Moonbow's ark. I am hair child's open eye, taste of words on tongue. I am scent of gorse, purple heather, brown bog, moss, touch of silver sage. I am dew, maw, mist. Does ocean weep into stone? Where do raindrops rest? I am fire and ice. Where wakes moon or sleeps the sun? Who dries this earth's tears? Whither goes the elk? Whence comes the spark that fires thought? Who am I and why? Thank you. Thank you for the inspiration of invocation, and uh, what a what a what a what a joy to have you with us this evening. And I'm 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 glad that my my participant list was playing tricks on me, and that we got to hear a poem from Rosaline. Happy holidays, beautiful. Well, another, another voice that I enjoy hearing when I get to attend, um, all, when I've been able to attend in particular Lime Square uh, is another series that I love to promote. And uh, if you haven't participated, make sure you join, uh, sign up and join them some Thursday uh, afternoon here in the States or in the evening over in Limerick uh, and a voice you'll get to hear there and that we've gotten to hear uh, again since, since the early days of Cultivating Voices uh, is Cathal McFarnan. Hello, hello, Cathal. Thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting me along today and- uh, Yeah. Thank everybody for the poetry, both now and what we're to hear. It's been beautiful. Thank you all. One poem for you is called uh, Triptych of Touch. Triptych of Touch. Each of us is unique, 
a mortal mold used once. We strive to reach, to seek. Each of us is unique. Hunger to touch, to speak, connect in, a, to, in an instance. Each of us is unique, a mortal mold used once. We all exist in our own space, set free to possibility. We can choose how to run our race. We all exist in our own space. To reach, to touch at our own pace, to tune to human frequency. We all exist in our own space, set free to possibility. The human touch can sanctify with grace the healing hand or love's most tender side. Swipe of virtuality has no place. The human touch can sanctify with grace, no need to justify to make its case. Touch, connection with an infant's cry. The human touch can sanctify with grace, the healing hand or love's most tender side. Jeanette, thank you very much. Tommy Ambry of Jeeves Galaire. Thank you, Sandy. Back to you. A joy to hear your voice as always. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you, Sam. Thank you, Don, for the nightness. Thank you very much. I would uh, be very uh, I, I'd be very remiss if I didn't just, you know mention this this you know this powerful connection that um that we fostered here in the early days of cultivating voices uh between um and it was because of my salmon connection between the poets of ireland and the poets of the united states there's so many other poets from different parts of the world that join us and, uh, here and they're here in the in the audience here tonight and on our site, but um, we're so grateful for the poetry and um, yeah, I'm just I'm always very delighted and and so grateful that uh, that human touch extends through our poems and and here we continue to move forward. Our next poet, our next poet is Leslie Trainer? Hi, Leslie. Hi. Um, I've kind of been hovering in the background for weeks, just absolutely loving the poetry. So it's a delight to read tonight. Um, I have been spending months just being allowed to wander in spaces um, because I'm researching sense of belonging. So I've been wandering and writing and have been on the coast recently. So this is called Tideline. A thousand butter lamps light dark spaces at times nearer, times further. Souls in the liminal linger caught on a spring tide at the space between what was, is, will be. A conversation between sky and water, pause on a heartbeat, fall before flight. You called me here, a last sigh, a promise kept between this tide and next. I don't think I knew you could settle a day, breathe me into night, raise the scent of wool, protective before the storm. Out there where you slip between the song of me and my longing for you. Thank you. Leslie, it's always, it's always a gift when someone reads with us for the first time at our holiday poetry open house. So I'm glad it was you today. And I look forward to more poetry in the new year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Merry you. Merry Christmas, everyone. Indeed. Well, we go to a friend of ours who's been joining us for many months now, 
always glad to hear a poem from the Isaac Cohen. I say uh, thank you, Sandy. You're welcome, Isaac. Thank you, Kim, and uh, thank you, Don, and thank you, all my friends. <coughs> Isaac Cohen, the growth of love. The leaf flutter on your skin. The fruit rolls on your neck. The storm takes you to the mountain. Oh, where are you? When did I fly? Here you are, grot of love spread until paradise. Amazing. And uh, now, uh, one poem is uh, when I was young, <laughs> uh, before 13 years old. Uh, yes. The Beard of the Song, as a coin. <laughs> yes, wait a minute. People reading poetry and women singing. She rebelled at influ no, its impulse. Uh, okay. Silent air, rubber under view. Shaking the gates of impurity. Yes, the quiet that wraps the muse so beautifully. And in agony, will be born a new song. Thank you, Isaac Cohen, Israel. Thank you, Sandy, and holiday. Holiday. Happy holiday to all my friends in the world. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you, Isaac. Thank you so much. Many, many, many blessings yeah. <laughs> to you and yours in this season of light. I move us to Joanne James next. Ah, oh, I'm so glad to have Joanne with us today. Welcome. Hi. I just, I just love this. I, I just see a theme of everybody with up, up, up. And you just muted, so unmute, please. I there thought I muted. Yeah, you you had, but then something happened. So it, it oh. happened. no worries. Okay, I'm glad you told me. I I just said it was. There's a lot here about change. And then how we how do we move forward? But then on and a lot of having hope. Um, I think that I that's all I want to say. I, I have a poem. Uh, the title is "I Stand on This Gangplank: How Deep the Sea." Was it a curse? Was it a dream come true? You could swim through fire, or swim with orcas near Puget's sound in their suffering. Bring them 
the strength you were given for the battles of the heart. These are ancient shores, these are ancient times. Thunderheads mount the afternoons. You are not able to tell the truth anymore. But nothing's concealed and yet you will be different. You will hold back. This, the gangplank of truth, this, the one-way street where you stand, a thousand planets singing an arrangement of broken dreams. Take that first step fling into future of steez, future of cooking pots and kettles. When your life becomes constrained, wearing you down, always, always remember the ancient is continuous. Thunder is star hewn, the seas a silent eye. Unblinking, you could hold your arms out to your sides when you step out into space. Thank you. <laughs> now, Ellie. Thank you so much, Joanne. The, the title alone of that poem. Oh, and then the poem. Oh my gosh. Thank you. I look forward to more from you and in the new year. Thank you. We go to, uh, again, another poet who has been with us since the earliest, the early days. I'm so glad to be hearing a poem tonight from our beloved Amy Berry. Oh, welcome. Hello, hello, Sandy. Hello, all friends in Cultivating Voices. I'm so happy to be here. I'm going to read a very, very short poem, a uh, tribute to Mandela. It's called Prisoner 4664 on Robben Island. I had a chance to return to where I had spent 18 years in captivity, a seven by nine foot wound. I could walk the length of my cell in three paces. Where I have missed from those I love, birth and funerals, weddings and anniversaries, Voices overlap, but thoughts ran like a clear stream of rough sediment. And I often ask, what more can you do? But pray and hope, pray and hope. Here, I recall a warden's first words. This is where you will die. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Amy. It's, uh, it's so good to see you and hear uh, your poem reminding us of those who can who who worked to inspire to inspire us to pray and hope and move forward uh, toward peace and our greater connection through humanity. That poem, wow, thank you. I'm very, very grateful to have that poem at the end of this year. My friends, my friends, we have our last five readers and then we'll have our drawing and uh, have a little hoo-ha together before we close out. We next go to San Francisco for a poem from Jeff Kalis. 
Hi, Jeff. So, so good to be with you. So warming to be with you, Sandy. I, I think you warm the world with uh, what you do for poetry and for all of us. So here is a poem that came out of a challenge in another group, a five word challenge. And the five words which we were all compelled to include, chosen by the group, were fairy, hoar frost, that's a connection to you, Josephine, sassy, hydraulics, and hook. Here was my poem called Valiant. And as is often the case with my poems, it has music in it. <clears throat> a nod to uh, the Fleetwoods and Come Softly to Me. Dum, dooby doo, dum, dum. Dum do dum do be do dum 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 do dum. Tune your heart in to the northeastern knob of the nation, middle of the winter, early in your life, where you were what it was, staying warm, staying live, neighbored by icy tides from Labrador, just in time for Valentine's Day, in time for a teenage dance at the casino, in time for a boy, still quick, still new, to claim the key from the hook in the kitchen to a Plymouth Valiant, newer still, though it's dad's, and drive through flurries, flirting with evening, to where she's growing up, out in Hull's Cove. The radio sings it for him on his way. I need, need you so much. Wanna feel your warm, warm touch. Sounds like it's girls that get us through the cold of winter and aloneness. This in his mind and in his nose, stray gas fumes from the slant six, the come on in his old spice cologne. Come softly, darling, come softly, darling. Stopping silent at her place, which glows into the darkness, hydraulics of the climate held in thrall and whitened by the winter, moonlight gleaming in the hoarfrost on the pickets of her fence. His heart is knocking at her door till he does. It opens to her sweet and sassy greeting. Goodbye to mom and dad, and then she's his. His valentine wrapped in fairy fashion beside him in the car where they can sing just to each other. I've waited, waited so long, he starts, for your kisses and your love, she follows. And then they go, their warmth and joy together, the headlights shining through the falling of the snow. Towards dances and towards memories of dances and songs that linger just as long as love. Dooby doo, dum dum, dum do dum. Thank you all for listening. Sandy, I can hear you now. <laughs> you were oh, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I have to tell you all this very, very unbelievable story. So the Fleetwoods are from Olympia, Washington, where I live. So um, once I was holding a yard sale and I was selling a stack of, I was selling 45s and Gretchen Christopher of the Fleetwoods, I didn't know, I didn't know who she was, although I knew the song Come Softly to Me came to the yard sale and came up to me to buy a 45 
of Come Softly to Me that was in that stack of records. She paid 25 cents for it at my yard sale. And she was absolutely thrilled to be able to find at my yard sale a 45 of her record that she and the other two members of the Fleetwoods had recorded when they were in high school. And they hit, then they hit number one on American Bandstand that year. So, wow, what a great memory. Thank you, Jeff. What a sweet two bits, Sandy. Oh, there my There you God. go. There you go. What I, a I, 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 I couldn't, I'm sorry, I couldn't not share that story, folks. It was just too much kismet there. Uh, <laughs> how could I not share that? So, mm. thank you. Thank, thank you. you. It's all about the connection, isn't it? It's all about mm. the connections. It really is. Well, and speaking of connections, I get to introduce now to hear a poem from my one of my dear salmon brothers, Phil Lynch, whom we've gotten to hear a number of times this year. And I'm again, I'm always so happy when we get to hear your poetry. Thanks for all that you've shared with us this year, Phil. Thank you very much, Sandy, and good evening, everybody. I hope you can hear me okay. I've had a lot of technical problems, so I haven't been able to interact much this evening. Reminds me, actually, it was April of last year I first joined CV, and uh, we were doing it through Facebook directly, as you mentioned earlier then. So a bit reminiscent of that. Anyway, get on with it. Um, I've chosen a poem that um, travels from New York to the west coast of Ireland and back again. Um, and uh, it, it was inspired. I was on a visit to New York about 10 or 12 years ago, seeing the sites and um, including uh, going up to the top of the Rockefeller Center, which, of course, is called the Top of the Rock. And um, uh, it was Christmas time, actually, so there was a connection there. Uh, so the skating rink was in full buzz and the Christmas tree fully lit up and all of that. But uh, suddenly, uh, when I was up there, um, it, uh, my mind was triggered back to a time when I was dispatched as a nine or ten year old boy to the uh, Connemara Gaeltacht area on the west of Ireland, uh, Gaeltacht being an Irish speaking community, to live there among them for about three months. Um, my first time away from home, um, I had nothing but rocks in the landscape for, 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 for friends and uh, mostly wind and rain swept. My only link with home was to climb up on top of a rock and, and try and follow the jet streams in the sky and imagine that they were then over my, my home. <laughs> so that, uh, that was making my link for me. So anyway, uh, the poem uh, is called Top of the Rock. Standing on top of this mid-Manhattan vantage point, high as I have ever been, picking out the green of Central Park and all other landmarks past in previous days, gulping in the sights I'd read about in books or marveled at on screens, believing now that they are real, for I have touched their inner flesh. A passing plane jolts me back to another rock, on top of which I climbed so long ago it seems another life. First time away from home, a child in a lonesome place. On clearer winter days, I'd trace the thin white streams from plains that skimmed across the Connemara sky, and in the distance, imagine them above my place of birth. Picture there my parents in the yard or standing in a nearby field, looking up, thinking of me. I'd strain my eyes into a teary blur then struggle from my craggy perch back down to bleak and barren earth. Descending to the plaza far below, you ask me for my thoughts. I observe the skaters floating in the glow of Christmas lights. I say, I'm happy to feel so alive. Then tell you, I've been thinking that rocks make great foundations. Thank you very much. Happy Christmas to everybody. See you next year for more of this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Phil Lynch. And indeed, we certainly look forward to seeing and hearing more poems in the new year. Well, our final three readers, here we go, my friends, and make sure you stay for our final 
gift away right at the end and I'll make a few announcements. Uh, we go to, oh, again, another of our poets that's been with us since those early days. Uh, Anne McDonald, I'm so glad Santa chose, pulled you out of the hat. Oh, thanks so much, Sandy. And I've <laughs> really, really, really missed being here. We've had a very hokey cokey uh, year in this house, as I'm sure many of you have. And um, Phil, thanks so much. I went to the Gale Clark as a child, hated every minute of it, learned nothing, just wanted to come home. Um, but I just wanted to say huge, huge thank you. And, you know, even though I haven't been able to participate for the last couple of months, I've been checking in and, you know, listening to what people are doing and being able to catch up on Facebook is an absolute gift. And Teresa Gallion's photographs have really brightened up my day because when it's piss and rain here and you look at where Teresa is, you go, Do you know, the world is not a bad place. So um, I'm just going to read one poem for you. And uh, one of the things that has been a huge struggle here is not the illness with COVID, but the fact that so many of us are on different sides of the vaccination debate. And one of my very dear friends and I are on the exact opposite. And I often thought if the COVID doesn't kill us, the arguments will. Um, but I'm choosing to, to focus the end of this year on kindness, because I think when all this is said and done, um, really and truly, you know, how we treat each other does matter and it will matter. So um, unlike the fabulous Eva or Yeva on her flute and Jeff singing, I'm back in the kitchen where I started when we started this so many uh, months ago. And I had an office, I had notions, I had an office for a couple of months with my daughter's home. So I'm back in the kitchen. So I'm accompanied by the dishwasher doing the hokey pokey. So I'm really hoping now that it won't, um, it won't play to have a with my poem, but here we go. It's like live television. So this is called COVID Kind. Confusion is general all over Ireland. Flooded with figures, tested with theories, stacks of statistics. I might think I know better than you how all this is gonna pan out. But is it not a universal fact that me and you and we are all just muddling through? Mostly, as a nation, I think we're afraid. Afraid of being left out, locked in, left behind, pushed out front or bearing the brunt of someone else's decisions. And this COVID tunnel is long and dark and I'm beginning to think it's made of fucking elastic. It feels like we're all stumbling towards the light in a never ending night up to our ankles and in information, up to our necks and new ways to try and live our days together. But this too will pass. And when it does, we'll remember how we spoke to each other, how we treated each other, how we cared for each other, made space for each one's version of their experience or not. And when it passes, in the fight to declare who was wrong or who was right, could the simple truth be somewhere in the middle? Will we ask ourselves, did we reach out or keep out? Do you really think that our opinion was the only one that mattered? And if we could look beyond our current troubled COVID state of mind, would we ask ourselves when all this is over, was I right or was I kind? So Ramila Maharat, we'll agree with Sandy um, and everybody at Cultivating Voices. Thank you so, so much and have a happy, happy Christmas. Thank you. Anne McDonald, and uh, I know you just finished a really great collaboration that you posted about. Congratulations. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah. Hope we'll get to hear some of that in the new year. And was yeah, was I right or was I kind? There is the message. There it is. And um, when I think about this, when I think about all the kindnesses extended through this group, um i'm just i'm 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 kind of overcome by it and very very grateful uh so thank you Anne, for that for that message that reminder uh not just through poetry but through but through these covid times as well great thank to you see so much and merry christmas to you and your family let's see you in the new year well, we go to Massachusetts, 
my mom's home 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 state um and i'm so glad again another another poet who has been sharing with us that we've appreciated and we're going to get to hear in the new year um we've been we're planning a special event with um slate roof presses poets and uh and we have janet mcfadden to join us with a poem and we're looking forward to, uh, your new book in the new year and the new books from Slate Roof Press. Thank you. Oh, it's so wonderful to be here. And um, I just want to segue off of what Anne was talking about, about um, being kind and also being in the kitchen. Because this poem I'm going to read um, was influenced by Joy Harjo's poem, Perhaps the World Ends Here. Um, which starts out, the world begins at the kitchen table, no matter what, we must eat to live. And this is a brand new poem of mine. I mean, to be honest, I, I wrote a whole pile of poems in June and I wrote nothing at all. And this one popped out last um, week. It's not like me. It usually takes me several months for a year. So anyway, I like it. <laughs> and this is called, After Everything, We Sit Down and Eat. We gather in the kitchen where mothers are stirring the black pot with its red eye. They stir the thick broth, the remembrances with wooden spoons like oars, all of us huddled together in the boat. No matter what, we will sit with each other and eat. My mother and father stand somewhere behind, their slight tug on the tablecloth unsettling glasses and bowls, time's warp sticking to shirt sleeves like lint. Those who have moved on are tugging, do you remember, do you remember, at those of us still expecting a feast? The conversation wefts between brother and sister, husband and neighbor, holding this grace of togetherness like a stitchery. No matter what, we are bound to the present by stories, the ones that always begin. Remember when Lila ate the caterpillar? Remember the night the oven? And where the fabric is rent, we darn and embroider with flourish. My father stitches his sailcloth, my mother her shawl. They are weaving something precious together for us seated here in the flowing a dark silk or a day or a river whose mill unspools from the bottom of the ocean, this sacred water we stir and look deeply into like a mirror, we taste and grieve. Thank you. Wow, Janet. If you had to, if if you had to bring a new poem, I'm glad it was that one. Oh my gosh! If you could only, if you were only going to write one new poem at the end of the year, oh my gosh! You know, stop in here. Yeah, don't <laughs> stop. Don't stop. <laughs> There's, you know, you've heard me say uh, during the past two years. There's an alchemy to cultivating voices that often happens, and and I, I'm. You know, we had we. This was a random order of who was going to read, and I, I, I just have to say, I love how the reading has crescendoed to these particular messages as we're getting ready to move to our final reader. So thank you. That that grace of togetherness is what um, you know piggybacks on that idea of kindness, and to me, that is what this group has been and I hope will continue to be all about through poetry, that grace of togetherness. Thank you so much. Well, our final, our final reader in our holiday poetry open house is quite, is quite O'Neill McCullough, hello and thank you. And we will enjoy this gift of your final poem in our holiday open house. I'm so glad to see you, my friend. 
Oh, Sandy, face come back, it's imagine that. Uh, good evening and good morning to everybody from um, the Gale Talk, the Highlands of Scotland. Um, I, I, I'm ending this year as I started it. I wrote my first poem ever about this time last year, and it's been an amazing opportunity to discover the democracy, the community of poets, and beautiful to be with you all uh, this evening. And this is a poem I wrote today. <laughs> for everybody here. So um, the newest and the lastest. Um, this is called Little Sister Hope, Solstice Nativity. And it's an honoring of Bell Hooks who uh, died in this last week and who has gone um, before us, all poets, uh, to, to lead us the way to the next door. Um, and uh, it's after her Appalachian Elegy. Hope is being born this night with all life here in the skin bin of time's veil. The door between pasts and now is open. Come, language this land, name it, welcome again. Come, mend and tune the frayed edge of ebb and earth. Repair this rivening of shore and ocean. Be before the rain and after it. Be the thunder and the upending storm. Be subversive kindness. Burst sun upon us. Little sister, you are here, returned and new. To the dawn as she sheds her first ochre tear. Come, while sapphire cloaks the earth. Unwakened while the world remains Still within its shadows as the moon's blade cleaves darkness, silver dust loiters at this crooked and cradled arm, a servant curved to the grace of your sleep, blessed numb by lightsome burden, pulse tethered to your every breath, always mouth for mouth I kiss kin to your ears, Release the raven to call us home always. Send wings fugitive into the wind. Wait to hear the wild heart dove coo. A covenant unfurls from feathered lips. Be love, be love, be love, beloved. Make my heart surrender refuge. Be love, be love, be love, beloved. Make my heart surrender refuge. A covenant unfurls from feathered lips. Wait to hear the wild heart dove coo. Send wings fugitive into the wind. Release the raven to call us home. Always, always pulse tethered to your every breath. Blessed, lum, numb by lightsome burden, a servant curved to the grace of your sleep. Silver dust loiters at this crooked and cradled arm, and as the moon's blade cleaves the darkness, the world remains still within its shadows. Come, while sapphire cloaks this earth, unwakened to the dawn as she sheds her first ochre tear, little sister, you are returned and new. Be the thunder and the upending storm. Be subversive kindness burst sun upon us. Be before the rain and after it. Repair this rivening of shore and ocean. Come, mend and tune the frayed edges of ebb and earth. Come, language this land, name it welcome again. The door between pasts and now is open. Here in the skin pen of time's veil, this night with all life, hope is being born. Thank more, thank you, Milvoga Sandy and everybody. <laughs> Woo! Sorry, have to come off mute. That was intensely uh, incredible. Oh my oh. God. Wow. Again, my friends, as I said, the alchemy, the alchemy. Well, you know what? Again, how we move to that final poem that encapsulated all 
the messages incorporated from the tapestry of everything that we've heard today. How about, my friends, we unmute to thank all of our readers in our open mic. We started out with Yeva and her magic flute. Kiva, Patrick, Isaac Cohen, Joanne, Ooh. Joanne, Ooh. Jeff, <laughs> Bill, <laughs> and Dan McDonald. Oh my Janet, What a night. O'Neill McCullough. Fabulous, Woo! fabulous readings. <laughs> As I said, the featured <sighs> readers wow. and, and the open micers can always be interchanged. That's the beauty of this group is everyone is the featured reader, truly. So I want to remind you before we do our, our closing uh, our closing ceremony and, and, and find out one of you will be receiving our gift away. Uh, also, thank you to my featured guests uh, to for uh, curing my anxiety that no one would come to the party. <laughs> uh, thank you, Kate Wegrizen, Fergus Hogan, Rachel Gomez, Mari Maxwell, Martina McGowan, Josephine Lore, Matt Mooney, Kim Ports Parsons, Teresa Galleon, Don Krieger, and Mary Oishi. All my gratitude to each and every one of you and to all of the beloveds who were here to listen and witness and celebrate this morning, afternoon, evening. We had, we've had quite a party. And Kim, let's Let's uh, let's spread a little joy to another reader, uh, another one of our guests at the party. So Al we have we have even more joy to spread than we expected because Billy Brown has offered to give one of his anthologies <gasps> as another Billy gift. Brown! So <laughs> so we're going to right now we're going to draw from the names of folks who have been listening on the Facebook live feed. So out there in Facebook land, one of you guys is our next winner and we'll get the Billy Brown Anthology. Bunny Bahal, you are our next winner from Bunny. Facebook land. Bunny, Bunny congratulations. Yay. Oh my gosh. Congratulations and happy holidays, Bunny. I'm so glad that you're and listening. What, how cool is that? That's super cool. And now we have an amazing gift to our one of our open mic readers. Sandy Yanone herself has signed a copy of Boats for Women and is going to send Kate Wakerson a copy of the book. <laughs> Along with Days of Clear Light, the Salmon Poetry. Oh, no, no, we, we, we got, we get, that goes to, that's our fourth prize. Oh, that's our fourth one. Yes. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Okay, so but Kate, I'm you get a gift. I'm sorry, one book, Kate. We're passing, we're spreading the wealth around, baby. You want it signed to somebody else, Kate? I'm happy to do that. Okay, I'm reaching in now. This is the audience on Zoom. Oh, yeah. Reaching on in the sack. Yeah. Tamara Selman, you are the winner Ooh, of Days yes. of Clear Light. Congratulations. We'll be coming to you from Salmon Poetry. A round of applause for our winners. Yay. Wow. Everyone is a winner, of course. Everyone. Everyone's a winner because we oh, got to hear this amazing poetry. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Thank you all for coming to our holiday poetry open house our second uh, I mean we had such a great crowd I tried to acknowledge each one of you in the chat and if I missed your name while I would because of my head got all crazy I apologize if I didn't say hello to you directly it's been an incredible 
uh, morning, afternoon, evening of poetry, depending on your time zone. And isn't that always true? It depends on our time. So many things depend upon our time zones. Uh, when we come together every Sunday or Monday to hear poetry, this is our last reading of 2021. Uh, Don and Kim does, does, are so deserving of a, a, a few weeks break and will be returning in the new year on January, Sunday, January 9th for our first new books showcase of the 2022 season where we'll be hearing from Kai Coggin, if, if you do not know, Kai's been with us before and is also the host of Wednesday Night Poetry, the longest running open mic in the United States. Uh, Kai will be reading from her new book, Mining for Stardust. We will have Arden Hill joining us from Nebraska and uh, one of my salmon siblings, Jude Nutter will be reading with us from Minnesota. That's our first reading in the new year. We have some great special events coming up uh, in the new year already planned. Uh, reading from a fantastic anthology of poems about Marilyn Monroe from uh, editors Margot Taft-Stever and Susanna Case. And as I mentioned, uh, we'll be having the poets from Slate Roof, uh, the poets from Slate Roof Press joining us, along with all of you on the open mics and our focused are in our wild card open mics, as well as the, our new book showcases. So I'm really uh, just so grateful to be with each and every one of you today. Um, if you would, would you please just take one more moment to unmute, give yourself applause, but I'd like to give a very, very, very special applause to Kim and Don for all of us. <laughs> Thank you, Don. Thank you, Kim. Kim and Don are the, are the backbone of this well yes. endeavor. And I, of course, want to thank every single one of you for being here live in Zoom with us when you're able to and uh, listening on Facebook, posting when, you, when you're posting on our Facebook group page. You know, each one of you is what's made Educating Voices Live Poetry what it is. Um, it's, it's every single one of us in this endeavor to share our poetry, to listen deeply. And as I say to you, every, you know, every single, every single week, you know, our, our humanity depends upon our deepest of listening. And once again, you've exemplified that here today as you do every Sunday. I wish all of you and yours the, the, the most joyous in this holiday season of peace and light. And I send you much love and poetry that's helped us endure this year and will carry us forward into 2022. Happy holidays. And I raise my glass to each one of you. Thank you. I got you. New Year. I'll see you on January 9th. See you next year, Sandy. See you next year. Thank you so much. Happy holidays. Thank you so much, Sandy. Thank you, Sandy, for what you do.